scrap. A lot of riders in trouble. Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised when we say the sprinters, Kersey Poo, Cipollini and Zabal. As we continue to watch the attacks here coming again, it's Escartine who's gone now. So Fernando Escartine, we've seen two of the Kelme boys attack and now he's having a go and this is going to have to cause a reaction. They really have put the US Postal boys on the defensive on this climb because uh, the US Postal were the pace making up the climb of the Telegraph was done by Frankie Andreo, but he paid the price. He's now been dropped by the peloton, and so there's only a couple of guys left around Lance Armstrong now, and these attacks surely to come. I suppose, though, Paul, going back to the Calder Telegraph, the biggest surprise of the day was the rider drop there, Alexander Vinokurov, and we didn't expect that. Nobody expected that. He was a big favourite. Now, this is what a lot of people did expect, though, on the Col de Galibier, the big attacks. This is Richard Viren going clear now. Another Bonesto rider has come across to Escartine. We had to expect this from the climbers. Escartine 40th in the overall standings, seven and a half minutes behind Lance Armstrong. And Richard Berenk is having a good day now, as uh, he was best of the rest over the top of the Col de Telegraph. Uh, Richard Berenk leading the peloton over sixth, five minutes, 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, so far, uh, behind uh, Jose Arrieta. Now he's on the attack with Casablanco, Beltran, Escartine, and this is a good group of four climbers going clear. Very good move by Kelme, the green and white jerseys. This team is the longest serving professional team. They've been in the sport now for 20 years. They launched Castelblanco off the front and immediately he had 100 meters. Escartine came shooting out of the pack. Now this is dangerous for Armstrong because you have two riders from the same team in a leading group of four. But I have to say Richard Viron came across very easily as well. And you can see now rejoining the group of Lance Armstrong, that Kevin Livingston is doing an incredible job because he's lifted the pace so high that that group, which just a few mo moments ago was 30 riders, is now down to a very select group of eight or nine. The white jersey on the shoulder of Lance Armstrong there, in fact, is another man who he fears in this Tour de France. It's the Swiss rider Alex Zuller. He's still waiting here. He knows his teammate uh, Arietta is setting the pace. He's about four and a half minutes ahead of these pictures at the moment, Arietta having uh, got rid of Piccoli, uh, Gian Paolo Mondini, Martin Dembaca and Fabrio Gugo. They were the four riders who went with him at 64 kilometers today and he blasted them all off on the Col de Telegraph. This is Beltran slipping back to the Armstrong group. I'm surprised they dropped him, uh, but certainly once, uh, once Zulla sees this, he'll know he's going to have to be the next one to make a move, I think. This is his teammate, by the way. This, these weather conditions today will actually play into the hands of Lance Armstrong because the Spanish riders spend most of their season riding in very good conditions, nice warm conditions in the Iberic Peninsula. So Armstrong will take advantage from the fact that he knows they don't like this cold weather. The weather on this day's day stage, in fact, is very changeable in the van valleys below the mountains. These riders are at, so, riding in temperatures of around about 25 degrees Celsius and over the top of the big climbs it drops down to 10 degrees Celsius. So that has a big effect on the muscles. One big man missing from this group is, in fact, Abraham Alano. Now, he's the leader of the uh, Onse squad, and we would have expected him to be able to ride up alongside Lance Armstrong. A terrible mental blow for him the other day when he was caught for two minutes in the time trial by Armstrong, and he, too, is another rider who doesn't like this kind of conditions. The cold and wet climbs, and he is in serious difficulty a long way back down this mountain. Well, this is incredible. This race, first day in the mountains, you can see the conditions the riders are in at the moment. Uh, and we're now looking at the pacemakers here as they keep on the way. But Alano has now been dropped, uh, having been caught for the first time in his time trialing career, now dropped by the Armstrong group. And so they are in serious problems right now. Christoph Morrow also in trouble. He's second overall. So uh, at the moment, Paul, things are going right the way of the American Armstrong. Well, in fact, it's uh, all very much thanks to Fernando Escartin, who launched that incredible attack. And the pressure then by Kevin Livingston to bring it back slowly has eliminated a lot of Armstrong's rivals for the moment. Some other names that are missing just now, and we're looking, I think, in this group, the white jersey of Pavel Tonkov, who started the day 13th overall. He, too, is in desperate difficulty just trying to keep in himself not too far behind on this climb. Uh, Richard Veronque will be quite pleased with his first day in the Alps and maybe planning a big day tomorrow at Alpe d'Huez. A uh, big day any day for a Frenchman in July the 14th. That man makes it look a little bit easier than I think it is to come up for uh, the Libier and being told to kindly leave the race course. He doesn't have a number on. Now Varenk goes over to the right, marked immediately by uh, Fernando Escartin and Jacquim Castelblanco is the rider we're looking at here. 
They've got the rhythm going now, but that group of seven behind, which includes Zula, Dufault, Livingstone, Beltran, and of course the yellow jersey, Armstrong, and the other man there, by the way, is another Kelme rider, and uh, that will be Gomez. And so they've got some good riders in that chase group as well. It's been a marvellous uh, day out for Jose Arieta, who's led over the telegraph. He's led all of the way up the Galibier by himself. And he's going to lead the Tour de France over the Col de Galibier and earn himself the maximum points. He'll also be picking up a couple of thousand pounds because he will win uh, the Honor de, de Grange prize here as being first over the climb today to celebrate 50 years of climbing the Col du Galibier. The crowd, although wet, enjoying to see, uh, seeing the arrival of the leader of the Tour de France today, at least on the road. But Varenk now is also piling on the pressure. Escartine and dropping a little bit. Joachim Casablanco. And there's the reason. Armstrong has ridden brilliantly with Tyler, with um, Kevin Livingstone to bring him back into play here. Varenk saw the return there of the yellow jersey group and he wants to try and get as many points as possible over the summit of this climb for the King of the Mountains competition. That's why he's attacked now. He knows that he's not a major threat to Armstrong at 7 minutes 21 seconds behind him. So he's just hoping that he will be able to get over the top of this climb in second position and earn himself an awful lot of points. But what great riding for the moment by the US Postal Service and Lance Armstrong. Absolutely superb. Jose Arieta is coming up to the summit of the Col du Galibier. There's the summit to the right. Here's a massive crowd cheering him on now. He's been in the lead since 64 kilometers today now. He goes over the top of the Col de Galibier. We have now covered 145 kilometers of a long day in the saddle of 213 in the Alps. And Arietta scores the first big mountain points for Team Bonesto. They'll be pleased about that because they had a rough ride in the Tour of Italy this year and they really do need a good Tour de France, and of course they haven't got on the team anymore, Miguel Ingere. Now, he's putting on a, another top here, Paul. Another, in fact, he's going to stop and do it. Why, what's the hurry, he says? Sensible move. We've seen so many accidents in the past that Suanyo is sent to the top of the climb to wait for him. But this is the next group coming up. The yellow jersey of Lance Armstrong, and Alex Zuller is right up there behind him, and the pace being met by a brilliant Kevin Livingstone today. He really has ridden wonderfully to pull back the attack by the Kelme boys and Richard Viron. As in fact now Virenk attacks for the King of the Mountains on his shoulder is Dufault. But Virenk gets it and leans heavily on Dufault. Just get, ask, give me a little bit of room here as we start the descent down. So it was Arietta, Virenk a second over the top of the mountains and Laurent Dufault uh, goes over in third place. And the gap on the leader uh, we've made a minute and 40 seconds on Arietta, although he will have lost maybe a little bit. We didn't actually see when he got away after that uh, putting on of the rain top. Alano, big question mark on him now. A big question mark. Can he recover on the descent down to Briançon? The man leading this next group up is a man who I expected to ride well today, Stefano Gazzelli, a teammate of uh, M Marco Pantani and also the winner last year of the Tour of Switzerland. Zelli there has picked up his rain top as well. Just kept the pace up while he went over the summit. Now let's see if he can put it on without crashing. Oh my goodness me, I thought he'd gone then as he reached for the handlebars. And Garini, he's going to eat his top, is he? No, he's going to put it on. He's going to gone down the top. These boys are not going to race down, Paul Ollie. They're just going to, they're conserving themselves. The racing done up the hill and they'll consolidate their placings as they freewheel down. So. Just to remind you that Arietta is the leader of the Tour de France on the road at the moment. He's gone over the summit of the Col de Galibier by a minute and 40 seconds. Over Richard Baron, Van Dufault, Lance Armstrong right there in that chase group and all of his main contenders around him, except uh, Christophe Moreau, who is behind by a minute or so. And Abraham Olano is even further back. Welcome back to Tour Plus on Channel 4. Now, over the last few years, the Tour de France has got so big with two and a half thousand journalists following it that you cannot really get close to the race. This is the real center of the operations. These two guys are listening to race radio and even the referee's channel and giving us up-to-date information on exactly what's happening out on the course. They punch the information in and we have a computer screen exactly like this in front of our commentary position and that way we know just exactly how the race is unfolding out on the route at any moment during the day. Well, thanks, Paul, and indeed the Information Centre working overtime today, I would think, to try and keep up with the action out in the Alps. 
Um, we're now just exiting here, Briançon, 183 kilometers into the stage. We're looking here now of the main chase group crossing the city, and there's 25 riders in here now chasing a group of nine men up front. Uh, Beltron caught up with the eight leaders, and in fact, in this group, we've got Pavel Tonkov, Christophe Moreau, and Abraham Olano, Paul. Some big names missed out on the slopes of the Col de Galibier there. And a lot of riders putting a lot of effort to try and pull their leaders back into the race as we now approach the penultimate climb of the day, the Col de Mont Genève. But again, it shows that how difficult it is to ride a mountain stage the day after a rest day. Abraham Alano not comfortable at all. Armstrong in the front group now, which is nine riders, is fairly happy, I would think, with the composition of this group. There are three riders from Bonesto, two from Kelme, and two from Polti. But in that chasing group behind, which is now 25 riders, he's got his two teammates, Kevin Livingston and Tyler Hamilton. Well, 54 seconds is coming in now, so that group of 25 men are pulling back these leaders, and they could neutralize the day of racing. We're in a Polti sandwich at the moment. We've got Ivan Gotti on the front and Richard Varenk at the back. And Varenk, remember, rides now for an Italian team. He's shaken hands with the organizer of the Tour de France, but I don't think we can call them friends just yet. And he'll be out to win the stage today in Italy for his sponsors. Ivan Gotti is the other rider at the other end of the bunch here. Now, I hope the, uh, everybody who are members of the Northgate and Middle School in Crawley are paying attention to the route today because I understand on a, each day you're following the Tour de France and tracing the route, so I hope you're enjoying the coverage. Greg sitting at the back of this leading group of, nine, of eight riders now, and obviously now the, the table, table's turned in that team because Gotti has become the team worker for Virenk. This is Paolo Lamfranchi on the front for Team Mappé. He himself moving forward for Pavel Tonkov, trying to put a lot of pressure on the front, helping out the Onse riders, because obviously Tonkov and Olano want to try and catch Armstrong before they get to the foot of the last climb of the day, the Col de Sestrier. Calme coming to the front now, this rider is Contreras, sitting on the front, setting the pace, thinking only about his teammate. It's amazing the way domestiques ride when they come to this part of a course, when they know that all they can do is just do a lot of work for their team leaders. They get themselves into a mindset where they don't think about anything else, just setting a very sensible pace, trying to make sure that they put the other riders in the group into difficulty. Armstrong again responding very comfortably to that attack, another acceleration, this time coming once more from Ivan Gotti. Gotti is in great shape in this Tour de France. It's a pity he lost so much time in the opening flat stages. He still could have found himself being a serious contender for a high overall placing. Well, they're now saying it's gone inside the minute again, the 58 seconds, back to the chasers. By the way, we lost the lead-out man today for Mario Cipollini. We'll probably lose big Mario tonight if he gets to the finishing line. Uh, but Gian Matteo Fagnini climbed off uh, today, uh, fairly early on, before he got to the Col de uh, Galibier and the Col de Telegraph. Anyway, these are the men that they go under the 25 kilometres to go banner now. Still together, I think they've got the measure of one another now, Paul, and that they'll stay together to the finish unless somebody nips away for the win. They have to keep the pressure on at the front, though. They have to keep sending the, the team workers to the front of this group to keep the pace high, because otherwise the group behind of Abraham Alano and Pavel Tonkov will close in. And that's what these climbers want to do today. They want to try and distance themselves ahead of riders like Tonkov and Alana before we go to the next time trials, because that is the only way that men like Escartin and Alex Zuller can climb their way up the overall rankings. Well, Beltran is now setting the pace here. A climber who was a young man developing alongside Miguel Indurain when he was winning the Tours de France. And now he's coming into his own as a good climber. He sits on the front. His team captain Zilla here joined the Bonesto team this year after leaving Fen 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 uh, Festina last year after the scandal. Varenk also left the Festina team, riding now in the colours of uh, Polti from Italy, the only team indeed who would employ him after the business of last year. And at one stage, Varenk had announced his retirement from the sport and he was brought back out because of uh, the Polti team. This is the chasing group now of Abraham Alano there in third position, wearing number 51, lying third in the overall rankings at the start of the stage this morning, but to today really trying to save himself and keep himself high in the overall rankings. Right on his wheel was Kevin Livingston there. Livingston just happy to let the other teams do the work. He's trying to save as much energy as possible because if this group does catch the Lance Armstrong group, he knows he will then have to share, change roles with the Onse riders and he will then be the one setting the pace at the front. Serrano is doing the work at the moment. Marcos Serrano for Onse. 
They've been at the front of the race really since it began this year and we thought it was because they were keeping their man Alano in touch uh, because he was going to come good in the time trial and good in the mountains. Well, as you know, he would get for the first time in his professional career, he was caught in the time trial. Lance Armstrong went by him. He also fell off in it. So he didn't have a taller happy time trial, though he did finish up with a high finish. And now in the mountains, he's having to fight back rather than dictate the pace. And I think this is all going to work on him uh, morally and mentally more than uh, anything else, Paul, because he's, he's just not leading the race and he's taking all the knocks really been knocked several times it's going to be interesting to see how Lance Armstrong handles the mountains over the next few days because Lance Armstrong is not the same bike rider that he was three or four years ago in fact he's coming into the mountains carrying 20 pounds less weight and that's going to be a serious advantage but the important thing is that for Lance Armstrong is he's never had to ride these mountains as a serious contender for the overall rankings he's ridden them in the Gruppetto on several occasions he's ridden the mountains when it's got too hard he sat up and survived to the finish but now to win the Tour de France he has to ride in the front groups like this all of the time and it'll be interesting to see if he can over the next few days stay consistent in the big alpine passes and there's Escartine going through this is Beltran and just coming on to the back I think we've got Contreras up there now but it shouldn't be it should be um it is Contreras, yes, he's in the back, 113, tagged on. There are just two Kelme riders in this group. Contreras is the man sitting in the, the green and white jersey at the back there. He, in fact, replaced his teammate Castel Blanco. There were three riders from Kelme in this group originally, but, in fact, Castel Blanco was left behind. Moving up into second place, the green and white there is the leader of the Kelme squad. That is Fernando Escartin. Up into third, Ivan Gotti. Armstrong always riding halfway down the line so he can keep an eye on the guys in front of him and if there is going to be an attack from behind he'll be able to respond to it respond to it very easily well, climbing up to the Italian borders now we're not too far away and still a fine piece of pacing being done by Manuel Beltran here and sitting on his back wheel Escartine not willing to work with him just at the moment and Ivan Gotti also looking very uh, happy and content a few riders down Armstrong, though, we've never seen him look as though he's in any form of difficulty at all at the moment. So I think uh, things, uh, by the time he gets to the finish, he's going to report a day that has gone very, very well indeed for him. The group behind still not closing in on the Lance Armstrong group with the yellow jersey. In fact, it's gone out to one minute, ten seconds. There in third position there, you can see Abraham Alano. Second position, in fact, for Alano now losing, using the last of his teammates. The man there wearing number 59, in fact, is Marcos Serrano. A few moments ago, he had a lot of teammates surrounding him. David Echabria was there, as was Andrea Perron, but they have now dropped off the back of this group. All of this group now suffering to try and stay and support the pace being set by the Onse squad, who are trying to pull their man, Abraham Alano, back into the Tour de France. The ex-World Road Race champion, the current World Time Trial champion, Abraham Alano. Obviously having uh, the first day after the rest day in the Tour de France, not a good one for him in the Alps. It can all change tomorrow when he's loosened off with a little bit of luck as uh, he continues to ride here along. Just uh, nice to see on his back wheel, uh, though, Kevin Livingstone. Which did, he did such a wonderful job for Lance on the climb of the Galibier. He's only fallen back into the chase group. And I thought at one moment this group was going to catch up with the Armstrong group. I'm not too sure now, Paul, they're going to get on terms. They were flying along the valley down yeah, through the roads towards Briançon. But then as they started to climb again, let's not forget these guys here are the strongest climbers of the day so far. These are the men who went clear over the Col de la Galibier. And as soon as the road started to tilt upwards, that's when the, the group started not to, to eat into the advantage that they had. Well, I'm doing absolutely magnificent here. And he just keeps his eyes down there. He dare look ahead because he'll only see the road rear up in front of him again. But this is a fine piece of pacemaking, and it's all being done for Alex Zula, who continues his ascent up the overall classification tonight, now riding in a very select group of climbers, starting the day seven minutes, eight seconds behind Armstrong. Chances are he'll still be seven minutes, eight seconds behind tonight, but there won't be so many in between him and Armstrong. He certainly he's cleared up the, the look of the overall standings by the end of this evening. The gap now going back to the Abraham Alano group has stretched out even more to 1 minute and 12 seconds. And that is all because of the tactics of the, the Kelme team 
and the Bonesto team. They're in the group here with the leader of the Tour de France, the yellow jersey, Lance Armstrong, and they haven't shirked any of the work or the pacemaking at the front because today they have their own plan. They have their job that they need to do, and that is to move their men, Escartine and Alex Zuller there in the white jersey, higher up the overall rankings. Well, they can move whoever they like up for, but this is a brilliant day for Lance Armstrong, the man who feared too many fears most at the moment, Muro Alano. We don't really include Stuart O'Grady. He wasn't expected to be up here in the climbs, but they are being left by another minute and a half by the line today. He's going to be the leader of the tour by nearly four minutes tonight. He certainly will, but the man that he said he was very worried about is in this group, and that's Fernando Escartín. Armstrong really rates the Spanish climber, and he knows that he's not really able to respond to the accelerations that Escartín can put in on the slopes of these big climbs. That's why on the Col de la Guilébier he did not respond to that attack. He used his teammate Kevin Livingstone to slowly pull himself back into the action. Well, Escartín's best finish in the Tour de France was fifth in 97. He might have bettered that last year. He was fourth in the race when the, all the Spanish riders uh, pulled out of the Tour during those drug scandals and police raids and so he never, we never got a chance to see exactly where he would have finished. He's come back with very good form. He's had this fright of an injured knee, which has been treated daily, which he knocked on his handlebars very early on. But it does seem as though he's had a good day today, and it must be OK. Armstrong now setting the pace at the front of this group. The teammates of Fernando Escartín and Alex Zula starting to weaken. The gap down to Abraham Alano still stretching out one minute and 20 seconds. And now it's Virenk's turn to come to the front in the red and white jersey of the Polti squad with one kilometre left to go to the summit of this climb here of Mont Genevre. Well, Jose Arrieta has won the last two big mountain climbs today. He's no longer with this group now. He was dropped by it as the climb started of the Col de Mont Genevre. A 10-kilometre climb, taking them to the uh, borders with Italy, and then the last uh, 20 kilometres of the day inside Italy, and we climb to the top of Sestria. Two of the last three riders to win a Sestria have gone on to win the Tour de France. Now, if Lance Armstrong wins today, I wonder. Lance Armstrong looking across to his team manager there, jo Johan Brunil, just coming alongside as he was at the back of the group there to have a quick word. For Brunil, it will be a chance to look into Armstrong's eyes and have a quick look and see what the muscles look like and see whether or not he's suffering. Brunil, let's not forget, only, only retired from the sport at the end of last year, and he will know Lance Armstrong very well. And the Kelme team have had a great day of racing today. They've had men uh, hurting everybody else all day long. They've still got two left behind here. This is Carlos Contreras, the Colombian rider on the Spanish squad. Uh, two Colombians on the team riding this race, the rest of them all Spanish. They can all climb hills better than anybody we could name, except this little group here around him, perhaps. And uh, Escartín is the Spanish captain, he's right in there now. And we're heading up, uh, the hills in the distance are in Italy, as we head up towards the top of the Mont Genevre. Last uh, road in France for today. A very close, compact group, and once we get to the slopes there of the climb up to Sestriere, then the big attacks will come. And that's when the, the workers of this group, the rider from Bonesto sitting at the back, Beltran, and the rider on the front, Contreras, will be put into difficulty because their team leaders will then start to launch the attacks. And Virenk, I have to say, is looking very comfortable. He's had a lot of work done at the front of this group by his teammate Ivan Gotti, who's just to the right-hand side in the, the red and yellow jersey of Polti there. Virenk will be looking to attack as soon as that climb goes up towards the summit of uh, Sestriere. I wouldn't like to pick a winner right now from this little group. If you look at all their faces, they all look pretty cool and as though they're handling the race very well. They've gone through that bad patch when they were trying to force the gap, and now they've all recognised the strengths of each one of the breakaway. Dufault, I think the big danger in that white Seiko jersey in the centre of our picture at the moment, he's the sort of man who looked for the win today. Veron, who's on the left of our picture, was briefly there, number 69. He also would desperately love to win a stage of the Tour de France today. And the yellow jersey of Armstrong, more interested in thinking long term here if anybody sprints away for the win he may not worry about that the fact is he's not going to concede any time and over his immediate rivals he's gaining time today the important thing for armstrong is putting time between himself and abraham alano and pavel tonkov he already has a seven minute advantage over the other riders in this group here in the shape of escartine and alex zola the, the most dangerous man to him though is laurent dufo because Dufault was only seventh overall this morning, just four minutes, 19 behind. And as we approach the line, <laughs> the acceleration obviously coming from Richard Virenk, a four-time winner of the King of the Mountains at the Tour de France. Well, Virenk is waiting, waiting, waiting before he goes. Armstrong isn't going to challenge him at all. 
So it's Ferenc, Armstrong, Dufault, the order over the top of Montgenevre. Ferenc, Ferenc, very nervous. He's going to be more nervous over the next few days because he feel that he will be able to pull the King of the Mountains jersey onto his shoulders again. For the moment, it's still on the shoulders of Mariano Piccoli, but only by a few points. And what's going to be very important is the position of these riders at the end of today's stage because Piccoli may well ride towards the Alpe d'Huez as the King of the Mountains tomorrow, but it might be his last day. Welcome back. Now, we haven't seen Mario Cipollini today, which is no surprise on a mountain stage, but it's not because he's gone home, which, if you'll remember, was originally the plan after the time trial in Metz. Apparently, though, Mario decided what with his historic four consecutive stage wins and all, he was obliged to ride the Tour's one Italian stage, Per La Gente, for the people. And just so that La Gente would recognise him this morning, he turned up dressed as Julius Caesar, which naturally was not a for Caesar. The excuse, not that he really needed one, was the 2099th anniversary of Caesar's birth. Either that or Chippo just wanted to force the tour organisers to fine him for a breach of the clothing regulations like they do every year. Well, the organisers obliged and slapped him with a penalty of 6,000 Swiss francs, which was about 3,000 pounds sterling. And lighter in the pocket, but apparently weighed down by history, Chippo set off and has been languishing at the back of the field all day. And for those of you sitting at home thinking things couldn't get much more ludicrous on the equipment front this side of a pair of Gucci cycling shoes, let me present to you, if I can get one out of the bag, the Gucci cycling shoe. £175 at all Bond Street's finest cycling establishments, and I dare you to wear a pair on your next Sunday morning club ride. Thanks, Gary. It's a pity those shoes are one size too big for you. Now, back to the race, and we're now just beginning the climb here which is the climb to the finishing line at Sestria, the climb of Mont Ginevra kept the same group of riders together. There has been a massive regrouping behind of uh, 25 riders coming together, but try as they might, they have not been able to get closer than one minute to this breakaway. And that group contains Christoph Moreau, Pavel Tonkov and Abraham Alano. And just a few moments ago, Paul, Tonkov has crashed along with Kevin Livingstone on the descent. But now we're on the climb, and it looks as though Gotti, who's taken some chances coming down in the rain, has been joined here by Escartin a few seconds in front. Escartin also took a lot of risks to, in fact, match Gotti on the descent there because the descent was very slippy coming through the town at the bottom here of the, the climb towards Sestriere, and they've opened up a gap which now has gone ex in excess of 10 seconds. Lance Armstrong is in, in the second group. Now, he will be watching the progress of Escartin very carefully, and one man who will be biting his bottom lip, waiting for the, the possibility of attack, will be Richard Bireng, because he was looking the most comfortable here, and he'll be a bit surprised that this group allowed his teammate, Ivan Gotti, to ride off the front quite so easily. Now, back to the chase group here. Now, let's see if we can... Uh, in fact, two riders going clear, but that was Alana going away clear. But uh, Well, he's, he's obviously got to make some out. Van der Vauer is the other rider with him. But uh, further back, I'm just wondering if Livingstone and Tonkov have rejoined the group. Well, Kevin Livingstone involved in that la unfortunate accident on the descent there. It was very slippy. A lot of riders in that group behind taking lists. Well, there's an attack there by Armstrong. Well, the yellow jersey has obviously had a great day in his first day in the Alps here. Look at the acceleration of this as he chases down those motorbikes. Five and a half hours he's been pedaling today, marking everything, never looking distressed. And now he's going to try and tear this race apart. Armstrong is riding in the same mode that we used to see from men like Injure and Eddie Merckx. That was an unbelievable attack. He took a lot of risk to go up through the inside there. There was hardly any room at all. Now Alex Zuller has to respond. He realizes this is a good attack by Armstrong. He wants to try and get up to the wheel of the American. He wants to get up there because Armstrong really picked it up rapidly. And you can see how quickly Richard Virenk went out of the back. Well, this can only tell us that, that uh, Lance Armstrong is feeling absolutely superb. I was talking to a journalist only yesterday who said Armstrong is not the type of rider to follow and wait. He is too impetuous, and at that point he's being proved now. He's a tough rider. He's just like a boxer. When you listen to him talking about the Tour de France, he says, nobody's going to drop me in the mountains. I'm going to fight all the way. And he will fight all the way because that's his mentality. He likes to put on a show, and that's what he's doing today. He realizes how important the climb is to Sestriere. It is an epic climb. It is a climb that has gone down in very many legendary stories. And he's gone across that gap in an unbelievable distance. 
Well, I reckon he's about eight kilometers from the finish of the stage today, and the Mayo Jean of the Tour de France has just done what all classic great winners of this race has done in the past. Prove you are the best by going up and joining the leaders and making it look easy. I'm sorry the pictures are breaking up, but again, the bad weather is starting to move in here. Straight up to the wheel of Escartine, onto the wheel of Gotti. Now he's showing these two riders, OK, I'm back. That was a nice try, but I've got the, I've got the measure of you. There's no way you're going to ride away from me on this mountain. And a little look across there by Escartine. He couldn't oh. believe it was the yellow jersey of Armstrong riding up to his back wheel. Well, but, <laughs> sorry, Paul, but that's going to be a real blow to these two. An unbelievable blow. Gotti thought he was going to ride away to a great victory in Italy. Escartine now panicking a bit, looking over his shoulder. He wants to know what the position is out on the road of Alex Zuller. Armstrong not worried. He said, come on, right, I'm going to pick up the pace once again. I've got Zuller in difficulty. Richard Virenk is a long way behind. And even further down the main road is Abraham Alano. Alex Zuller, the Swiss rider, who is really looking now to try and pull himself back up to Armstrong, but he's having a hard time. He's been forced now to do something I don't think he was prepared to do today, and that was go out on his own and use a bit more strength because he's going to have to try and get back up to these three now. Escartine must be absolutely stunned by this. We talk of Escartine as a climber. We talk of Armstrong as a strong man. And Armstrong is ripping the legs off this climber right now. Well, I was talking with Armstrong a couple of days ago about his performance in the time trial. He said to me, well, if you think that's good, wait till you see me in the mountains. My advisors have told me I'm going to be better in the mountains than I am in the time trial. And let's not forget, Phil, he's carrying almost 20 pounds lighter up these mountains than he was three or four years ago. And he's got the strength that he had before. The arrival of Alex Zuller is imminent now. It's been a big effort from Zuller, this, the Swiss rider coming across. And, uh, you know, I'm just wondering if Armstrong is going to let him on or jump away from those two again. He's not too worried. Don't forget, Alex Zuller is over seven minutes behind in the overall ranking. Armstrong is so comfortable, he jumped across that gap. That gap was up to 30 seconds, and he ripped across it in less than one kilometer. Another acceleration now coming from Ivan Gotti. Immediately, Armstrong has re reacted to that. But what it's done is, in fact, it's put Alex Zuller into a bit more difficulty. But Zuller riding sensibly. He's pulling himself up to the leading group of three. So the group of six is down to a group of four now, and gone is uh, Contreras, and surprisingly, Richard Veronk has gone as well. These four riders now climbing their way to the summit in Italy. In Sestria, the only time we come into Italy this year, one Italian would dearly love to win here, and that's the winner of the Tour of Italy this year, Ivan Gotti. And I believe he thought he had it when he went clear with Escartine, but he, he had a double take when he saw the yellow jersey come up behind. They didn't expect Armstrong to react like that. They would have expected an attack to come from behind from somebody like Alex Zuller. But the way Armstrong came across, it was so easy. It was impressive. He really just danced on those pedals and ripped himself across a 30-second deficit straight to the front. And now he's decided, I'm the yellow jersey. There's no team legs left. I'm going to control this race and dictate the pace that I want. What a wonderful picture there of the yellow jersey of the Tour de France proving to this point in this race he really is the best rider in it. Johan, Johan Bernil yes. coming up alongside. He obviously wants Armstrong to cool it off a little bit. Armstrong is flying up this climb here. Complete concentration. This is the face that he had just a few days in the time trial. And that is the team manager's car going alongside him there. And it would be interesting to know exactly what Johan Bernil is going to say to him at this moment. Well, he must be concerned. He's probably saying, Lance, you don't need to do this. Just keep it cool. You're winning the Tour de France. But Lance, uh, Lance just wants to win the Tour de France like the all-time greats who ever won this big event because he's really hurting these three riders now. Otherwise, there wouldn't be that gap between the wheel of Escartine and Lance Armstrong. Armstrong is setting a pace there, which is so difficult for these other guys to follow. Let's not forget the man in second place has cracked Escartine. Fernando Escartine, the climber, is being ridden off the back wheel of Lance Armstrong, and they cannot respond to this pressure. Zulov isn't ready. He's just come here. He hasn't recovered from the chase, and I don't think Gotti's got it left. The gap is there. Armstrong knows he's got the gap now. As soon as he looked back under his shoulder there, he it's saw, and he's accelerated. He's out of the saddle, sprinting up this climb now. He's trying to really put a real clenched fist onto the Tour de France today, and he's flying up this mountain. A physical and mental delivery here by Lance Armstrong to all of his rivals in the Tour de France. He is just going faster and faster and faster and he is going to win this stage and he is going to go minutes ahead of the field because of it too. 
psychologically this will be a major blow to men like Fernando Escartin. Fernando Escartin went out very early on the Col de la Galibier because they knew they needed to get big time on Lance Armstrong. He put in a lot of effort to try and put Armstrong into difficulty and Armstrong used his teammates sensibly. He waited for Tyler Hamilton to fade away and then he was left with just Kevin Livingston. Livingston rode sensibly over the top of the Col de la Galibier and then went into difficulty. Armstrong then left on his own but again he's managed to tactically turn the race to his advantage. Richard Virenk further down the road now currently in fourth position on the road fifth position on the road is one minute and 20 seconds behind Armstrong. This has to be the greatest comeback in any sport at all. The fact that Armstrong managed to conquer cancer was unbelievable. But the fact that he's riding like this in the Tour de France is also impressive. Alex Zulinal has gone clear, a lone pursuit for him behind Armstrong. He's dropped Escartin and Gotti, but this is a man just trying to survive, trying to limit his losses. This man has managed to come back from the face of death, and now he's riding at the front of the Tour de France like a Trojan. He's inside, two kilometers from the finish. Uh, less than one and a quarter miles to go for him now and with every re pedal rev he is taking time out of every man tomorrow is a vicious day harder than today to Altuez Lance Armstrong is though he's gaining his time now I don't know what he'll do tomorrow now because we can't say he'll sit by and watch not the way he's riding this race two kilometers to go now for Alex Zula the man who's tried to show some resistance remember Alex had to join the break before he could go in the chase of Armstrong if people thought Ar Lance Armstrong was going to crack in the mountains it really is an impressionable for performance of his today Alex Zula is closing in slowly on Armstrong Armstrong I think now starting to ride within himself making sure that he can survive up to the finish line he doesn't want to hurt himself too much because he knows there's a big mountain stage tomorrow and I'm sure that's what Johan Brunil told him do enough to win the stage but don't hurt yourself too much the Tour de France is still two weeks to go well it's wise advice of course here's the the Italian crowd here now cheering on Lance Armstrong they've seen him coming up on a big screen up here Armstrong racing up Zula is closing in 22 seconds is the time gap but I don't think you'll see Lance till he's got his coat on one kilometer to go to the finish now for Lance Armstrong it's going to be a veritable sprint up the hill for this man in yellow because he is being pulled to that finishing line a total man possessed he wanted that yellow jersey back and now he's doing it absolute justice he is the best man on the day the first day in the Alps and once again it may well be that injury has in fact had a big part to play on Lance Armstrong season so far he was robbed of the chance of going to ride Liège Baston Liège because of a crash in the Tour of Valencia he came back and prepared himself specifically just for one World Cup race that was the Amstel goal race he was beaten in a photo finish by Michael Bogart and then I think Johan Brunil said get it in your mind you can do a great ride at the Tour de France and having Johan Brunil alongside him is a very important factor because Brunil himself is a man who's ridden for the overall rankings at the Tour de France and that's going to be a big asset for Lance over the next few days in and out of the saddle now as he rides up to the top of Sestriere. He'll be up amongst the chalets very soon. They've moved the finish slightly. It's a little bit further on this time around than it was when Bjarne Reese won in 96. But it doesn't matter now because he's got about half a kilometre to go towards the end. And he's over the top of the climb. Well, one kilometre precisely as we see the kite just ahead of him. There's the red kite indicating just 1,000 metres to go to the finish line. He will be getting maximum points in the King of the Mountains, but he doesn't care about that today. All he's caring about is getting as much time advantage over everybody in the race as possible, and also throwing down a psychological blow to the big climbers of the Tour de France who thought over the next couple of days they would put him into difficulty. He's turned the tables, and in fact, that's what he's done. He's damaged the climbers in their own terrain. Lance Armstrong hasn't eased off these pedals at all. He has kept his rhythm going. And we're sure the superlatives now to continue just to say how wonderful this performance is from Lance Armstrong. He's been absolutely superb. 173 riders left the Grand Bourne on today. Destination, the Col de Telegraph, the Col de Glibier, and Mont Genève, and finally Sestrier. And now there is only one who's going to get to the line ahead of everybody else. He's American, his name is Lance Armstrong, and it's a long time since we've seen a performance like this. This is a performance of great champions. He rode sensibly with his team, he never panicked, and when he saw he could put the hammer down, he took the opportunity. He never thought about the couple of days that he's got to come, the couple of days when he will have to climb up to the Alpe d'Huez and defend his yellow jersey. He just thought about putting the hammer down hard and getting as much time advantage over everybody else, and there is an American flag to wave him home.
And the rain starts again as Lance Armstrong conquers Sestria. Now he heads up towards the line. He's just a shade under six hours in the saddle today. So he didn't suffer from the rest day, did he? As Armstrong now has torn his rivals apart here in the Tour de France. They will have to go home tonight and rethink their tactics tomorrow in the Alps because if this man comes out like this tomorrow, the Tour de France really will be over. He's left nothing to the imagination. Well, this will take him back to his victories at Beach Mountain, but we're an awful lot higher than Beach Mountain in the Tour du Pont here. 400 meters to go for Armstrong, and never once has his face changed, never once has his pedaling revs changed either. He's been absolutely controlled all the way to the line. He looks over his shoulder to make sure nobody is coming, zips up the maillot jaune. He's done that proud today and I think he's getting ready for a two-arm salute. You don't get that privilege in a time trial. You ride fast and you win. He's done that twice in this Tour de France. Now he has ridden fast and dropped his rivals. Mano, oh Mano. So now he is going to cross the line, I think. This will be some victory salute. It'll be a while before we know if it is as the winner of the Tour de France, but there are a few people in this race now will doubt that. Lance Armstrong comes across the line. Winner today of the mountain stage of the Tour de France. And the man who has tried to limit the escape of Armstrong coming up to the line now, the seconds are counting. In fact, it looked as though Zilla was closing in. There's the clock for you all to see. He'll be just on 30 seconds, though, down on Lance Armstrong. But even so, he has made a second place on the line. 31 seconds it will probably be rounded up to. And the arrival of the men he just left exploded on the mountains. Fernando Escartin leading over Ivan Gotti. These two thought they had the race sewn up seven kilometers from the summit. They're now racing for third and fourth place. And I wonder if Gotti will try and jump around Escartin. I would think so because he's Italian, but you never know. But look at the time gaps on the right-hand side of the screen here. In fact, I don't think uh, there's anything left in Gotti now. As Escartin comes up to the line, and he will take the third place finish. But the gaps are what's important in a race on time. And these are big. One minute, 25 seconds. And Richard Varong, who looked very sharp when he was spinning out the points on the high mountains, hit the wall about 10 kilometers ago. And he's now in all sorts of trouble. He's being pipped on the line here by Beltran, I think it is, who's just come from absolutely nowhere and found himself a pair of fresh legs. And in fact, uh, heading up to the line, the Bernesto rider is uh, Beltran, Manuel Breltran. So he's found his second win as he comes up for fifth place on the stage. The Ronk will get sixth. And uh, then the man behind, Conter Contreras, will take seventh place. And the gaps continue to grow. So as the riders continue to finish and the gaps continue to grow, let's go to Paul Sherwin now. He's with Lance. A lot of people expected the climbs to go out for you today. You actually turned the tables around and gave them a big slap in the face. Well, I wanted, but, uh, I wanted to answer some questions about that because there was a lot of people that, uh, that, that figured my climbing was suspect. And, and uh, you I think, that today? No, I mean, I, I, I gave a response, but uh, I wasn't trying to to uh, to shove it in anybody's face. I just wanted to. I felt good. I saw an opportunity. So Dufault was dropped. Dufault was my main concern. And when he was dropped, then I went. And boy, did he go. Let's have a look at the stage result then. Armstrong winning by 31 seconds over Alex Zula. One minute 26 over Fernando Escartin. The same time given to, to Ivan Gotti. But of the others, well, Alano finished here with the Belgian Van der Vauer and has lost over three minutes. And Laurent Dufault, well, he must have really hit the wall because he lost even more. And Pavel Tonkov, who slipped on the descent coming into Italy, he lost over five minutes. Chris Borman arrived amid a torrential cloudburst. He lost more than 40 minutes. Lance Armstrong on the podium for the third time in this Tour de France. He is really ripping the race apart. Let's now have a look at the overall situation here. Armstrong leading Abraham Olano by six minutes and three seconds. Christophe Moreau, they swap places, these two is third, 7.44 back. Alex Zuller continues to ascend the classification. He is now up to fourth, but look at that, seven minutes, 47 seconds behind. Well, ninth in the race now is Richard Berenk, and tonight he returns to the podium to